If any of you talk to a friend or someone familiar with, say, the history of nuclear weapons, and I hope this isn't a topic of your conversations, you'll find there are incidents and names that many of us know or have at least heard of, like Robert Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project. At the end of World War II, the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were criminally wiped out by the Americans on the map at the time, and the K-missile crisis and other events that come to mind for a large number of us when it comes to nuclear weapons as a weapon for the end of the world. But now, I want to tell you a different and somewhat strange story. What you have in front of you is the American bomber known as the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, known for short as Big Ugly Fat Fella or Buff. It is one of the main grenade launchers during the Cold War and after it. During this period, during which military tension between America and the Soviet Union escalated, the American Air Force was regularly active on the American coast and was sending bombers armed with nuclear bombs flying over the country's skies throughout the day, every day without any interruption. On January 23, 1961, there was a Kazifa Baf flying in the sky of the village of Faro, a few kilometers north of the city of Goldsboro in the state of North Carolina on the eastern American coast. And while it was being refueled from an aerial fuel tank, this fuel leaked from the right wing of the bomber and then a weight imbalance occurred that affected the balance of the bomber and caused it to crash. Where was the disaster? It was in the nuclear bombs on board. The bomber was carrying two Mark 39 nuclear bombs, so you can be in the picture even though the 39s were light bombs compared to the second nuclear disaster that was in the arsenal of America and the Soviets. This lightweight bomb was 250 times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. The problem is that when the two bombs fell from the bomber during its fall, they fell in a way that led to the start of the reaction sequence of an explosion. In a situation like this, the almost fatal result that was supposed to happen was two explosions, each one in the shape of a large crow's nest, with part of eastern North Carolina entirely erased. Plus, of course, the consequences of this nuclear disaster would have included radiation, diseases, and deaths in the hundreds of thousands. But God willing, the two bombs did not explode even though one of them was one step away from the point of explosion. This incident is well known in American military circles and was lifted. The secrecy of its details in 2013 could give any of us a glimpse into the hell of a world with weapons in this way. And this hell does not have to happen through a direct attack, but also why am I telling you this story? Because only two or three weeks ago, on August 20th, 2024, the New York Times revealed that US President Joe Biden had agreed last March to a top secret nuclear plan that would leave America. For the first time since the end of World War II, the American nuclear deterrent strategy was directed towards China, which supplies the nuclear stockpiles. It is being pursued continuously and rapidly to the extent that the Americans are very concerned about this strategy, which at its core includes modernizing most of the American nuclear stockpile over the next two or three decades. It will cost the American Treasury, if they complete it, more than $1.7 trillion, and this ridiculous number will lead the Americans to start a program called Sentinel. This is Sentinel, and this will be done from during which the American ballistic missiles were modernized at an amount exceeding $130 billion. Today, in this very important and dangerous episode, we will learn together about America, and after decades of freezing and reducing its nuclear arsenal, it will renew it again and build new weapons of mass destruction through it. We will find out why the U.S. is afraid of China in this way, why it will spend these terrible expenses, and whether we will see a new Cold War that might be worse between it and China. In July 2023, there was an American girl named Katie Adamson sitting in a cinema in Berlin, watching with hundreds of others in the hall. The Oppenheimer film by the famous director Christopher Nolan. The film had raised an international uproar before and after its release, but unlike most, if not all, of those who were sitting in the cinema, Katie's thoughts were thousands of kilometers away, specifically in Congress. Katie, by virtue of her job as a newspaper correspondent for the New York Times, covers the most important things going on in the halls of the American Congress, especially government spending. The various budgets that were approved by the committees had her thinking about some important questions while watching the film, such as, for example, how. The American government paid $2 billion for the budget of the Manhattan Project at the end of World War II. Did Congress approve this budget in the first place? And if it did, how did they keep it secret for such a long time? 
The important thing is that when Katie returned from her vacation, she spent six months digging and combing through the thousands of historical and governmental documents available about the answers to her questions. In the end, she reached the first and most important installment to finance the project, which was $800 million. The equivalent of $13.6 billion is currently being spent by Congress on the project without anyone knowing where this money goes except for seven people. The amount is spent as expenses under a general and rubber item called accelerating production. In order to know the staggering amount of American spending on nuclear weapons in previous decades, the Brookings Institute estimated what was spent on American nuclear programs from the years 1940 to 1996 in the amount of $11 trillion at current exchange rates. Imagine this number until 1996 only. While, for example, the budget for American nuclear programs currently is between 60 to $70 billion a year, and these numbers are expected to continue until 2030. With successive increases, these enormous numbers will of course give you a clear idea of the extent of the American insistence on adhering to the nuclear deterrent strategy, no matter what it costs them in terms of dollars and huge budgets. This is an insistence that is contrary to all international laws and moral foundations. We will talk about it a little later in greater detail, but the most important thing for now is that these numbers will appear to us. A very vital question, what is all this money being spent on? Exactly, my brothers. The Americans have had something since the 60s called the nuclear triad, which is a nuclear deterrent strategy that they first invented. This nuclear triad is the possession by any country of the ability to launch its nuclear weapons from land, sea, and air, because despite the fact that the number of countries currently possessing nuclear weapons is the official announced number, the number of countries that currently own a nuclear triad in the world is four, America, Russia, China, and India. We have an American nuclear arsenal consisting of intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear submarines, and bombers capable of carrying nuclear warheads. Each side of the Trinity has an important military advantage. I mean, submarines have the advantage of being difficult to detect and monitor. Strategic bombers have their main advantage in movement flexibility and the ability to reach anywhere in the world, while intercontinental missiles have their main advantage in their large number. So, what do you mean by the advantage of ballistic missiles in their large number? If you look at the map in front of you, you will see the locations of the underground American ballistic missile silos, which are distributed over five states in the American West, mainly in a contiguous area of 103,000 square kilometers. We are talking about approximately one-tenth of the area of Egypt, for example. Of course, there are second nuclear warheads spread throughout America, but most of the ballistic missiles you will find in this area. These missiles are all of the LGM-30D model, the third version of it, and these missiles are known by their more famous name, Minuteman missiles, after a group of rapid intervention and special response soldiers during the American War of Independence. When America developed these missiles in the 50s and 60s, it had in mind that it needed missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads and operating with solid fuel. And, you know, this gives it the advantage that it can remain in place for a long period of time and be ready for immediate launch all the time. Thus, it will be a counterattack component if the Soviets suddenly launched a nuclear strike and were able to destroy most of the strategic bombers with it. For example, these missiles had a lifespan of 10 years. The plan was to change and modernize them after that, but with the passage of time and the Soviet threat diminished until the Union itself collapsed and America gained supremacy. In the following years, there was a clear unwillingness to renew these missiles, leaving them as they are, and not spending billions of dollars on them. This led to the number decreasing over the years, from 1,000 missiles deployed in 1972 to approximately 400 to 405 missiles from 2017 until the present moment. Are these missiles in order to be neutralized by any other country? This country will still need to strike ballistic silos with no less than 800 to 900 missiles or any other direct targeting weapon. The second rate of achievement is very difficult, of course, and almost impossible. This will take us to the Guardian program, which I told you about at the beginning of the first episode, and it is one of the most important components of the new American nuclear deterrence strategy. This program is one of the most complex weapons development programs that the U.S. Air Force has ever seen, and perhaps the entire U.S. Army. In the words of Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall, 
it is among the programs that cannot fail. The program is supposed to replace the Minuteman missiles with Sentinel missiles, which are produced by the well-known American weapons manufacturing company Northrop Grumman, which is the manufacturer of most of the basic American naval components, such as aircraft carriers and nuclear submarines. The complexity of the program comes from the fact that it will not only remain a replacement and upgrade of missiles, but rather a real estate and technical project in the first place. In order to understand the whole issue, let us return to the map of American ballistic missile silos. When missile silos are built, they are no longer just spaces for silos, but rather vast areas of land in which there will be real estate development for military facilities and technical and administrative complexes accompanying the missiles, as well as the communications and control infrastructure on which they are used. However, the Pentagon will buy land, a new neighborhood, to have space for any facilities or new technical underlay. The new missile's external structures will be made of lightweight carbon materials instead of steel, and this is very important for the Americans. The first reason is that they will be able to make more missiles, unlike missiles made of steel, and the second is that they will be able to modernize the arsenal more easily over the estimated lifespan of these missiles, which is 50 years each. This has made the cost of the Guardian program increase dramatically every year more than the previous one. Some members of Congress and politicians, especially since this cost is as high as the cost of maintaining the current missiles until at least the year 2035 until the entire ground ballistic arsenal is replaced. If we look, we will find that the issue began in 2020 when the Pentagon granted Northrop Grumman about $13 billion as an initial payment for the program that was valued at about $96 billion at the time. More than $130 billion and some estimates have reached the cost of the program at the end of $300 billion, and this increase creates a problem for the Ministry of Defense with Congress, which holds the program and evaluates every step in it in order to approve these increases. Some members actually object to spending on it, but does this mean that the program will stop? For example, Congress will do something. The truth is, most likely no, it will not happen, and I will tell you why after a while. But before that, let me tell you that the Ranger is not the only modernization project for the American nuclear arsenal. Of course, there is a more famous project than it. It is currently the one that has taken the spotlight in the American Air Force. The strange plane in front of you is the Y-21 Raider, the newest American bomber and the successor to the B-2 Spirit in the air, which is being developed by Northrop Grumman. Of this, the American government is about $700 million, which is the cost of building a skyscraper, as a long report on it in Aviation Week magazine said, will make it one of the most expensive planes the world has ever seen. The U.S. Air Force has requested at least 100 units of it, and it is supposed to receive it from Northrop Grumman in the coming years. This missile, as I told you, is part of the U.S. strategy to modernize this nuclear triangle, and in order to understand the issue more, we must understand that the doctrine that always drives the American Air Force is that it must be capable of taking the battle to distant lands to any enemy using strategic bombers that are very difficult to detect or intercept. Here, can one of you tell me why fighter planes are the basis of any Air Force? Anti-aircraft attacks and moving the battle to the depths of its territory is one of the most important goals of any strong army. And well, this does not mean that America has begun to make an impact meaning on spending on fighter jets. By the way, on the progress of fighter pilots last March, a spokesman for the Joint F-35 Fighter Manufacturing Program Office announced the most expensive weapons manufacturing program. An American in history, the F-35 officially became the first fifth-generation nuclear-capable aircraft. It is now capable of carrying a B-611 nuclear bomb, meaning it has become a dual-capable plane that can carry both regular and nuclear weapons. This is the first time a plane has achieved this in the world since the 1990s. This is all other than the new nuclear warheads themselves and the development that is happening in them in terms of guidance, power, and the submarines that I am not talking about. Because of the time of the episode, which some consider to be the most important aspect of the American nuclear triad, but to bring you closer to the picture. It is enough to know that a single American nuclear-armed submarine carries nuclear warheads whose destructive capacity is seven times the destructive power of all the conventional and unconventional bombs dropped during World War II, including the two atomic bombs that America dropped on Japan. Imagine the ability of every submarine to destroy as you do not see that. 
The basic question that we are supposed to ask here is whether America needs a nuclear arsenal of this size, complexity, and diversity. Of course, if any of you asked us this question, we would most likely say this no. In fact, if we asked some Pentagon experts, for example, and they answered in a moment of truth, it is rare for them to understand that they will often say that America does not need an arsenal of this size and diversity, nor does any other country, and this is not my opinion alone. By the way, there are members of Congress who completely adopt this opinion, but this is, of course, in an ideal world, not ours. In our own world, we will find that American presidents, even though they, in their statements, they always try to suggest their overwhelming desire to reduce the nuclear arsenal America and the vision of a world without nuclear weapons and attacking any behavior of any country that tries to adopt a nuclear weapon, except for the foreign entity, of course, which has immunity, as you know. Despite all this, their real actions and policies remain completely opposite to what they say. I mean, if we look here, for example, we will find that it was the end of last October. In 2023, the Pentagon announced that it is developing a new nuclear weapon, the B-611 bomb, which will replace the current B-611-12. And those who are still bringing her biography from a while ago, this announcement was surprising, including some congressional officials especially since it came against the backdrop of Biden's continued pledges to reduce the role of nuclear weapons in the security of the United States. But as we said, the actions of the administrations of most American presidents are completely different from their statements, even if we look at that. The last three administrations, but for example, we will find that the Obama administration proposed developing a tactical nuclear warhead that fires through a cross-air missile, the ideal type to start a nuclear war, according to Stephen Young, one of the most important American security experts. And we will find that during the era of the Trump administration, the Pentagon developed a nuclear warhead that is launched from a submarine and its destructive capacity is one third of the power of the Hiroshima bomb. And this power is what the Americans know. Its impact is limited and of course, capable of killing tens of thousands of people in a few moments. As for the Biden administration, it has begun to, during that time, the Sentinel program came to light. The B-21 and the National Nuclear Security Administration, NNSA, produced during its time the B-6112 bomb, which is from the Obama era, and can now be landed, as we said, on F-35 planes, that is, after years of delay, and the cost of its development and production has reached about $14 billion, and the newest and strongest generation is currently being developed with 6,113 Biden specifically after his approval for the secret nuclear strategy last March and taking into account the permanent presence of Russia and its huge nuclear arsenal as the first and clear enemy, even after the dissolution of the Soviet Union more than 30 years, especially after its invasion of Ukraine and its repeated threats at intervals to use tactical nuclear weapons. Despite all of this, the Biden administration has put in front of its eyes is China in particular, because China's nuclear expansion is proceeding at a much faster pace than the intelligence officials' expectations. Only two years ago, Chinese President Xi Jinping insisted on canceling China's nuclear strategy, which has lasted for decades, which is to maintain a minimum level of deterrence. Currently, the Chinese nuclear arsenal is set to exceed the size of the tea arsenal of the United States and Russia in the future and the Chinese nuclear complex itself is currently the fastest growing nuclear complex. In the world, China currently has about 500 nuclear warheads, and this is up from 410 last year, 2023, and therefore it is. The most developed nuclear force currently is trying to reach a number of ballistic missiles equipped with nuclear warheads on alert that exceeds the number of American and Russian missiles. The Chinese military nuclear complex, by the way, is a big story. If you would like to do an episode about China's nuclear program, let us know in the comments. The important thing is that all of this let security analyst Stephen Young say that America intends. It will make its nuclear arsenal more lethal and will attempt to serve as an essential element of the current American security system that exists. Based on the principle that America, in order to maintain its security, needs to be militarily capable of exterminating tens or hundreds of millions of people in less than an hour. In an ideal world, it is assumed that a balance of deterrence exists, meaning when there are several nuclear states capable of exterminating a large number of people, and there is no state, many of these countries also face the same nuclear threat. It is assumed that all of these countries will refrain from using atomic bombs for fear of a reaction. 
The second nuclear states, of course, are, in all honesty, nonsense, because this theory of deterrence treats humans as machines that do not make mistakes and have no feelings. It assumes that the officials of the countries are in systems that are completely controlled to the point of preventing them from tampering with nuclear weapons, and this is not true at all. There is no human regime in history that succeeded in completing a long period in an ideal manner. This is impossible, even if we are talking about nuclear weapons. The previous decades had examples that needed episodes to show that the world was on the verge of change every time. Identity and nuclear terror were just one click away from a fanatical or extremist who decided in a crazy moment that he was starting a massive nuclear war. Thanks for watching and see you soon for a new topic. Do not forget to hit that subscription button to help us grow. Bye bye.